Hello Level Friends, this week I'd like to talk about raw SQL recording requests and about inserting the invalid in Level 11.44 and 12.1. Let's go! Let's begin by dealing with a query exception. We are preparing here a query to a table which does not exist, so we already know that this will fail. We're doing a bunch of where classes here, and if we run this, you can see we get an exception back. But in order to debug this, what we can do is we have this two SQL method here, which we can run here to see the statement here, but you can see we also have placeholders in there. So mostly what we want to do, um, use the raw SQL method because this is more helpful because now we have a statement which we can just copy and run directly on our database. But mostly what you will find yourself is inside a situation where you're going to run some code. So let's put this now inside a try and catch block here. And we are listening for this exception here. And then if we got this, let's dump this out. Let's call this traditional error. Get the message of the exception. Let's run this and we still have to call here first in order to trigger the exception. Yeah. So now we have our traditional error here where we see what the message is, which includes here um, the message and it also includes the query. But if you take a closer look here, there are no quotes around our data here. So this means we can't just copy this here and paste it directly to the database. But we have something new which you can use now, which is called get raw SQL. And let's call this our new error message. And if we take a look at this, now you can see we have quotes here and everything in this statement is formatted in a way that we can directly use it. And yeah, basically that's the same raw SQL which we were running here before. But now we also have this on the query exception itself, which is very handy if you want to debug something and lock the full SQL statement. Thank you, Eric. Next, you can now record requests instead of faking them. We have here a test where we make some assertions against an HTTP call, which we make against the API of GitHub. And one way to do this, something that you see very often levels, that you're going to fake the HTTP client. And the way that you're doing is first by telling you which URL or which part of the URL the calls you want to fake. So all the calls here to the user endpoint of GitHub are now being faked inside this test here. And here we also define what we want to return from this request, which is some information about Taylor Otwell from his GitHub profile. And then, so now that this is fake, now we're making the call here, which is this call, which now triggers this here, our call to be faked. And then we have here some user data. And then we can make sure that this was sent here with the assert send assertion here. And um, we're just making sure which URL was, was being used in this case, but we can also use the response data here to make sure that we have some keys and some specific values. And if we run this, this should pass. Yes, it does. Perfect. So this is this looks good. But there are some cases where you don't want to fake this call. You just want to let them go through and still make some assertions about the calls you made with the HTTP client. And here's now something new that we can use. So let me copy this whole test here. Mm -hmm. And let's call this get GitHub users through record. So we have another method now on the HTTP facade, which is called record. So this is not a new method. This was already in the framework, but it was protected and you couldn't use it directly. So it was used internally but now you can use this as well. And the difference is that we are now not faking the client. The client still makes these calls to these APIs, to the endpoints that you define. So these are being made for real, but still we're going to record them. And the benefit now here is now we don't need this anymore and we also don't need the response. And here now our, our assertion part looks a little bit different. So what we can do now is on the facade, we can say we want to look for something that was recorded. And this receives a closure with the request as the first parameter. This is true, but the second one is the response here. Yes. And inside here, we can now make our assertion. So for example, let's say that we want to make sure that the URL 
should be the one which we used, which was this one here. Let's run this. And you can see this is already passing. And of course we can move on and add some more assertions. So maybe now about the response, we want to make sure that the status to be 200, for example. And yeah, I think this, this is a method and I had a typo. Yeah, I think now it should work. Yes, it does. So yeah, as you can see, we're making now um, assertions about the request, but also against the response. And this is now a new way where we can just record all the HTTP client call which we are doing, by the way, you have to do those calls with the HTTP client. If you don't do this, if you do this just with Guzzle, of course, they are not recorded. But if you use the HTTP client by Laravel, then you can do this, record all the requests that you're doing here, and they are running through, they are still happening, but still you can record them and yeah, make some assertion against them if you want to. Thank you, Stephen. And last, let's try to only assert the invalid. In this controller here, I want to make sure that I can create a user and I do this by getting all the data from the request and then I'm validating all this data. Email is required and should be an email, name is required and the password is required. And then we're just creating the user, pretty simple here. Then back inside my test here, I want to make sure that when I send a post request to the route which is connected to the controller which I just showed you, and I provide all those um, fields here, name, email, and password, then the response should be successful and we should see this user inside a database, which we do. Perfect. But sometimes you want to make sure that something fails, but not everything is failing. Let me show you what I mean. Let's copy this here. All right, and let's make sure we are not providing the name. And now here you want to make sure with a new method, which is called assert only invalid. And we want to make sure what we get back here is that we only get a validation error for a name and not for email and password because those are given. And this gives back a working test as well. So this is something new that you can do inside your test here. You can make sure that only some specific fields of your request of the data that you provide are failing and everything else still works. And this is something that wasn't as easy to perform before and it only worked on a JSON response, but now we have this new method, which is very handy. Yeah, just to make sure that only specific fields are failing while doing validation. And similar to this, we also have a new method called assert only JSON validation errors, which is pretty much the same, but now this is checking on the JSON, which we get back from the response. So if this is a typical error response with JSON code, like the typical format for Laravel errors, then we can use this method as well. But yeah, if you want to make sure that when you do validation only specific values are failing, you can do this. And with this also make sure that all the other values are still passing. Thank you, Günther. That's it for this week. Thank you all for your contributions and please keep them coming. Have fun with the new features. Please let me know which of the ones I've shown you like the most. Put it in the comments and see you next time. Bye.